With the possibility of this thing being incredibly violent, of course we have to first test it out against the Shire. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Please spin, please spin, please spin, yes! What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That game that used to be a much bigger, more strategic version of rock, paper, scissors. Now, when this started out, it was you picking which units were best suited for beating your opponent and how to position them. But now it's kind of evolved into being you guys uploading the most cursed things imaginable onto the workshop and me being unable to resist checking them out, which is exactly what we're gonna do again today. Now, some of you guys may remember that last episode, I called in a drone strike against the Shire, and it wasn't exactly my finest war crime, but I was pretty proud of it, and I couldn't wrap my head around how somebody made a drone in tabs, or in the unit creator specifically, because it's not a mod, so you can't upload modded units to the workshop. But when I took a closer look at it, I realized that this is made up of a bunch of different parts that we've already seen before. Like, all of the propellers are just propeller hats, and the arms connecting the propellers to the body are braids of hair. And I would imagine the body is just made up of a bunch of different helmets overlapping one another. Point is, once you see that, you can't unsee something like the Vietnam helicopter. <laughs> I told you guys we were gonna get cursed this episode. I'm not gonna point out every individual thing that was used to make this, but man oh man is it ever a monstrosity. Like, its eyes are endlessly unsettling. And the fact that it doesn't have a mouth makes me think that it can only wish for death rather than beg us for it. I keep trying to steer this thing towards the battle, but it seems to have a mind of its own, so I'm not the one giving orders, okay? I figured in true Vietnam fashion, we're gonna have a face off against a bunch of farmers and peasants and monks. I'm genuinely afraid to find out what the hell this thing does. Let's see how, oh, you fly? I'm sorry, fly? It looks like it's air thrusting rockets out of it and the paint job is freaking out and or gone. What is happening with this thing? Oh, I see. It's a distance thing. So if I'm far enough away, you can quite clearly see that it's the head of a potion seller wearing a hat with a whole bunch of stuff sticking out of it. So what happens to the body? Like, I still don't understand how people are making these cursed units. I genuinely want to see if a regular old Tabs faction can kill one of these things. And what happens if it dies? Is it going to crash? Is some terrifying little pilot going to come out of its head or cockpit, whatever you want to call it? So we're going to have the medieval faction give its best shot. We've got a lot of archers, a lot of catapults, a lot of cannon fodder in all reality, and I wanted to show you guys how these things react to being placed. Not well is the general consensus. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and uh, do your thing. They are just the worst. <laughs> and I thought all my stupid units were broken. Fact is, if these worked flawlessly, if they actually hovered around and shot people, they wouldn't be nearly as cool. I wouldn't change this for the world. I just had an idea that struck me like a bolt of lightning. What would happen if we used Cupid? If we make all of the helicopters fall in love, are they gonna make little baby helicopters? But then I realized they already have a baby helicopter. Where did that thing come from? I guess they're busy reproducing and we can make them even busier. I always wondered what happens when a helicopter falls in love. Oh, um, yeah, we probably shouldn't use grown adults in diapers with bows and arrows against attack helicopters. We might need to change our strategy up a little bit, see if we can beef up Cupid a touch. <laughs> they back away too, which is funny enough, one of the smartest things a ranged unit in tabs can do. Who would have guessed that these things are actually brilliant? One way or another, I will have my helicopter orgy. You will not deny me forever. <laughs> All right, go ahead, do your thing. Did they just fire bullets? Oh, okay, well, 
We made them love, but it turns out when units are close enough to them, they have a secondary weapon for infantry. They can fire machine guns. They just mowed down all of these cupids before firing a single rocket. I don't know how to fix this. Like, I can try using more cupids, but it's gonna get to a point where we're gonna have so much love on screen at once that my computer isn't gonna be able to totally accurately simulate it. Fingers crossed that this is the tipping point. Okay, some of you get blown up, but then we get a nice pile of love in the middle. Definitely hearing some smooth jazz as they split up. What? Oh no. When we make them love one another, they get cold feet if they have feet, and then they back away, giving them enough space to absolutely ruin us. <gasps> Why are these things so powerful? How about we try a nearly endless amount of ice archers against just two helicopters, because I want one to die, and then the other to stay alive long enough for me to see what happens when one of them dies. That makes sense? Hopefully, can you guys please fire your arrows today? Oh, okay, that one's really cold. It's not frozen though, because the eyes are looking fine. I think this is actually working. Is it dead? No, it's still firing. You guys need to hurry up and fire faster because you're getting absolutely ruined. I'm done. There's, there's just no beating these things. They're a perfect mixture of grotesque and overpowered. The next cursed unit that I stumbled across is called Meme Doge. And credit where credit's due, that is undeniably Meme Doge. I'm more so questioning what he could possibly fire out of that golden harpoon cannon. I'm gonna try not to concern myself with the fact that he costs over five million. I mean, that's a real missed opportunity. He should have cost 69,420. But I'm gonna have him face off against a Tabs meme in the Wobbly Horse. We got a Baker's Dozen of them. They might be able to stampede over him unless they all get frozen solid. Okay, oh wait, what? Now he's just spamming dynamite on their frozen corpses? What does this thing do? <laughs> so he freezes and explodes? Can we see that again against a bit more of a structured opponent? The wobbly horse is unpredictable, so you can't really use it in experimentation all that reliably. But we'll have a phalanx against Meme Doge to see what exactly it is you do. Yeah, he does just barf up a whole bunch of dynamite, and then the frost breath, and then more dynamite, and a shout. So his magical meme gun seems to have a whole bunch of different abilities. He's gonna back himself off the edge of the map if he's not careful. I'm totally okay with this. Are we gonna beat him? Oh my god. I can't believe it. We, we, we actually won! Who survived that? I know memes typically come and go real quick. You know, they all die, but this guy is still a friggin' hero. This was a unit that I couldn't resist checking out because it's me and my memes. You know, it's Captain Sauce riding on Snuffy. And again, riding is gonna be put in loose air quotes because I don't think Snuffy appreciates me messing up his mullet. Seems to really want me to get off, but that is not gonna happen you know, unless it's over your dead body, big guy. This is another one of those times where I have no idea what to use against something like this. So what's a fair fight? What would be an interesting dynamic? So I just landed on a dick's worth of hobbits. Hopefully that'll be worthwhile. <laughs> oh, Snuffy's got some farts in him, a little gassy. Is Captain Sauce extra heavy or something? Oh, I've got my punches and something else. What was that? I'm so confused right now. Why did Snuffy decide to break dance? Now of all times, it doesn't make any sense. Come on, we should be marching into battle together. We've been through so much, why must you be a top? I don't want to be a bottom. <laughs> the random mammoth farts really just do it for me. We won either way, I would imagine. Once you turn this last hobbit into jam, then we should live happily ever after. Is it dead? Did you hammer it into the ground? Because I don't think we're gonna be able to dig that thing up. 
Oh no. Don't tell me you guys made this a stalemate. That's the last thing that I want out of this round. They really did it. There is absolutely a hobbit underground right now, like some kind of stupid little fuzzy carrot. Way to go, guys. I have actually found a whole bunch more cursed units, so you can expect to see more of them soon. But I think for the rest of this episode, I want to do some more defend the hobbits or protect the hobbit, whatever you call it, because you guys have been really enjoying it over the past few videos, and I find it to be one of the most fun and challenging things in this game. Like we found ourselves in a level called Mythological Army, where Blumpkin is facing a bunch of beasts and giants and angels who all want him dead. And our one objective is to protect him and I guess defeat the enemy in this case. I'm seeing that they have Zeus and Artemis, which means we are probably gonna wanna use the blunderbuss. Hopefully their strange barrel armor can absorb some of that range damage and shoot down some of the Valkyries. Like obviously the main damage dealer for us is gonna be the Ballista. It is the God Killer, so we should be using them against gods. Hopefully they can stay protected long enough to actually do something. I don't like to do this, but I think this is gonna be a bit of a special scenario where I'm gonna take control of Blumpkin and have him not run into the enemy. I wanna back things up a little bit and not end up like that guy. Yeah, you never know where the Minotaur is gonna go. <laughs> Come on, guys, I believe in this strategy. Just run over this way, Blumpkin, towards safety. You got this. <laughs> There's so many freaking bodies flying around. <laughs> Come on, soldier, there we go. Get those shots off. I'm, I'm kind of a general. You know, I'm Commander Blumpkin. I tell people what to do. Keep firing, keep firing, ready, and volley. Why am I standing in front of the ballistas? I am absolutely gonna get shot. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> Come on, guys, aim for the giant. You gotta get big tree Jesus. There we go. That is what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a little cheap when I can actually steer him away from the battle, but let's be honest, these levels weren't built to be beaten. There's no other way. It looks like Blumpkin has now found himself surrounded by the Viking faction in a level called Ramming Man from North. Whatever that means. I mean, I've been playing a whole lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla recently, so I consider myself to be a bit of a Viking expert. Even I don't know what's going on here. I'm thinking the only strategy we can really use is more bodies equals better. You know, like, there's just so much happening here that I'm hoping if we put enough hoplites on the battlefield, then maybe the enemy will be a little bit too interested in them and not nearly as interested in poor old Blumpkin. I want to make sure that we've got layers, though. We're going to make this formation like an ogre or an onion, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, you only need to survive for 15 seconds, so please stay away from the danger. Just, just careful, careful. Stay under the shields of the hoplite. That's it, everybody. Step on him, but not like that. I meant step on him in a protecting way, not in a deadly way. Or a kinky way. Every time I've used the hoplite with Blumpkin, they do seem to use their shields to defend him. I I'm sure they're just trying to defend themselves and he's at dick height, so it's a coincidence, but at the same time, it works out. So I'm kind of afraid to change things to something like the Squire. They're cheaper, so we can get a whole lot more of them, but they're also weaker and I don't know if they're gonna give a rat's ass about protecting him. Fingers crossed. It's only 15 seconds, man. Just avoid danger. Yes, get a leg stuck in the ice. That that would help. No, no, don't grab hold of anybody's junk. What is wrong with you? No means no. It means don't grab hold of the giblets. What if we went with something a little bit more aggressive? And I uh, use that term lightly because the fencer is a bit of a puss, but I'm pretty sure they're really good against melee. I feel like they're similar to the teacher where they can parry or counterattack or, or something like that. In which case, they may be able to actually kill the enemy before the enemy gets to Blumpkin. No, no, stay away from him. Oh, okay, there, there's a big opening here. We've, we've got a big opening. No, the, the Valkyrie didn't get him. Oh my God, they actually did it. I, he got crushed by a boat. Please tell me you're alive. Please tell me, oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe this! A buzzer beater boat strike is the worst. 
I was right, though. Like, they wiped out the enemy. It was just Blumpkin's own hubris that got us completely ruined. I I'm going to run it again. I just hope that it wasn't luck. Maybe we can get a battle that is a little bit different. Not quite as totally accurate. They've already thrown the boat. The boat is down. All you have to do is not get paddled. Where is he? Where is he? He's underneath a bunch of fencers, I think. Maybe. Blumpkin? Oh, he's standing. Show me your eyes, Blumpkin. Yes! Mission accomplished! Oh, come on! You guys could just suck the fattest part of my halfling balls! Like, this is so... This is unreasonable! They call themselves Honorable Jarls, or so the level name indicates, but I don't see the honor in having a 3v1 in a death arena that I can't add to! Like, they won't let me place units between the Jarls and Blumpkin. So, how am I supposed to protect him like I can try putting fencers near the Jarls my units are literally touching them so hopefully because they're closer they'll take priority maybe I can also place a bunch of them out and around I, I gotta say I'm really impressed by the fencer I'm still shocked by the result of last episode they are surprisingly powerful but I, I just need them to work a little magic once again. Please, please prioritize. No, they went straight for Blumpkin. Locked him in an ice arena and instantly killed him. Okay, well, that's going to be a problem. I don't see there being any possibility of me turning this around or turning the Jarls around specifically if they're going to prioritize Blumpkin no matter what. The VIP is going to get killed instantly every match unless I take control of him and run away. But even then, the fencers didn't pull it off. They got absolutely ruined by the shouters and by the yarls and... Let me guess, you guys shouted somebody under the ice. Which means I still have a unit in this battle. So it's a draw? I mean, Blumpkin died, so it's a loss. I, I, I was trying to look at the brighter side of things, but... <laughs> nope, there is no brighter side. I forgot that we've already made an effective strategy against this. If we use the ballooner, then they should be able to use their gross jizzamy hands to grab hold of the Jarl and then fly away with them. Like, they can't make ice arenas in the sky. They can't hurt Blumpkin if they're in a different area code. And if they burn up on re-entry, great. If they survive, then they're still going to be hung on to by all of the weird little ballooners. They can't really flail around. It might work. It's not going to deal with everything, though. I should use them on you guys as well. I really don't want you jumping in. I think one of the biggest issues with the last time was that I put the fencers in front of the enemy when I should have the fencers behind the enemy. You know, stab him in the back. Don't get stabbed in the back. Makes a whole lot more sense. Let's try something like this. And then I've still got a whole lot of money left over could try ranged units. I think this is going to be one of those cases where I am going to have to take control of Blumpkin. I am going to have to run away with him. Let's have him run into a group of musketeers. They can hopefully shoot everything. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Because otherwise, these guys are going to re-enter and crush him. Yeah, get out of here, you big dummies. I'll be over here. Uh, nope, I'll be over here. Yeah, probably over here. Could you guys shoot over that way? Thank you. We've got problems. I can't tell if this is going well. Oh, we've got a, a whole bunch of fencers over here. Okay, everybody, flank from the right. Flank from the right. And, and fire. Keep, keep firing. The Earls all survived. And they don't have any jizzamy hands on them. That's a problem. That's a real problem. That is not how to hold a gun, soldier. You gotta be kidding me right now. How do you plan on firing that thing? Oh. All right, whatever floats your boat. I'm getting out of here. Uh, am I screwed? I think I might be screwed. There's no way any of these Jarls are gonna get killed. It's up to me controlling Blumpkin to try to outsmart them, maybe? What are the chances I could get them to jump off the edge of the map? I'm gonna have him follow me over here. I'll see if I can find a little hidey hole in the woods. That's what hobbits are good for, right? Maybe over this way? Oh no. Oh dear. 
This won't be a dead end accent on dead. Oh. <gasps> Just gonna try to wait my okay. <laughs> There's absolutely no way. We're gonna finish things off with probably one of the coolest custom units that I've seen in a very long time. I don't think you can really call this cursed, but somebody made a razor tank. They just got rid of all the cannons and replaced them with blades. I don't know if it's gonna shoot the blades or spin around like a really dangerous Beyblade, but I'm all for it. With the possibility of this thing being incredibly violent, of course we have to first test it out against the Shire. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Please spin, please spin, please spin, yes! <laughs> it's perfect! We need them to all march in one at a time, sporadically. They can't all go at once. I want to see this thing really get up to speed. I don't even think Da Vinci's driving it anymore. Someone else has managed to man this creation and improve on it, in my mind. The cannonballs are one thing, but seeing them fly around. I, I wish there was a mod for tabs that allowed for decapitation. Like, if you could cut a unit in half, it would be amazing. Even if they were just like Play-Doh. You cut him in half and there's just two parts. It doesn't need to be gory, it could just be hilarious. You guys know me, I really can't resist trying out one of these piloted units without seeing what happens when the pilot falls in love with its creation. I'm in love with the Razor Tank, but I don't know what's gonna happen when the insides do. It doesn't do backflips. It's resistant to Cupid. I mean, it killed itself, but... That might just be the fact that it's really brinking on the edge of falling apart no matter what. I mean, I don't even think the blades line up with the cannon holes. You think this thing would be able to cut down some giants? I mean, technically the skeleton giant is wearing shin guards, which is where we're gonna be focusing. There's a possibility that we could just cut the legs out from underneath them and then chop them into tiny little bone bits. I don't know if any melee unit can hurt the Razor Tank. They can't get within range. These things are just way too big. It's, all, it's just perfect, okay? I'm gonna end it there because this is my new favorite unit. You know what I think? That's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. If you know of any more hilarious, unique, cursed units on the workshop, then be sure to let me know. Leave a comment with what they're called, not just stuff that you've made. Now, I know a lot of people make stuff hoping that I'll use it because they think it's funny or it's overpowered or whatever, but just stuff that you come across that you've never seen before, or stuff that isn't normally in tabs. That's the stuff that I find the most interesting because I've now made 101 episodes of tabs somehow, and I try to make it so that every single video brings something to you guys that's brand new. I don't want to keep repeating myself. I don't want to keep doing the exact same thing over and over again, but I need your help. So let me know, leave a like, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff, and maybe I'll return to use more of the Razor Tank again soon. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.